Okay, so one of the most powerful concepts when it comes to making money and investing is something called compound interest. And hopefully most of you out there are familiar with the concept of compound interest. And we have a problem that involves this concept. Now, uh, compound interest is not only important in the financial world of investing and building wealth, but what we're talking about here is something called an exponential function, and this is really important in all areas of science and mathematics. So it's something that you definitely want to understand. But let's take a look at this problem. It says, you invested $7,000 for 10 years at 5% annual compound interest. How much money did you earn on this investment? Now you're going to need to know a formula and you want to use a calculator. So feel free to look up a formula uh, for compound interest because there's this not one. Okay, so go ahead and look it up, get that formula, get your calculator. But we do have a multiple choice question here and let's go ahead and take a look at our answers. So A is $11,230, B is $15,800, C is $1,705, and D is $4,410. Okay, now if you can figure this out, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'll show you the correct answer in just one second, then of course I wanna walk through exactly how to solve this problem step by step. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need help learning math, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at this problem one more time. So we worked really hard and we saved up $7,000. Now we're ready to invest and make money on our money. So we're going to invest this $7,000 in something, you know, a vehicle at the bank. Maybe it's a certificate of deposit, something that gives us a compound interest return, right? So $7,000 is, is invested for 10 years at 5% annual compound interest. Now be careful with this part of the question, and that is how much money did you earn on this investment? All right, so let's take a look at the correct answer. The correct answer is D. So we made $4,410 on this investment. Okay, so what we did was we started off with $7,000 and after 10 years, our money in our account, our investment account is gonna to grow to $11,410. So this is what happened in 10 years. So how much do we make? Well, we have to take the difference of these two numbers and that is $4,410. Now, some of you might be saying, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I don't even get any of this stuff. Well, don't despair, I'm going to explain compound interest and the formula that we need for this particular problem. But if you knew the formula and if you got this right, well, that is super impressive and you definitely get a happy face and A plus, a 100% and a certificate of excellence for knowing a thing or two about compound interest. Okay, so let's go and get into the solution right now. So here is our problem. The first thing that we wanna recognize is that we have a multiple choice question here. So for those of you that are math students and you're like, you know, Mr. YouTube Math Man, what should I do if I don't understand a math problem on a test or an exam? Just take a guess. You never know, you, you know, you got a one out of four chance. So never feel bad about guessing, you know, uh, never leave a math question blank or unanswered, okay? The only exceptions is when you get penalized for uh, wrong answers and that can happen, but uh, the vast majority of the time, it's better just to guess, right? So I have no problem if you guess the right answer. But the best way to solve any math problem is obviously to know the math. All right, so what we have here is a word problem. So always read a, a word problem at least three times. Make sure you fully understand the problem and the question, okay? So let's go ahead and uh, read this problem one more time. So we have $7,000, we're going to invest this for 10 years at 5% annual compound interest. How much money did we earn on this investment. So first of all, you should kind of think to yourself, all right, well, I'm gonna make money on my $7,000. So if my $7,000, let's say for example, goes to $8,000, it grows to $8,000 over 10 years, how much money did you earn on your investment? Well, your $7,000 
made you a thousand dollars all right so a thousand dollars would be the correct answer so you know with this problem you know this is kind of a good example uh, of really understanding the question because the question can really get you in trouble if you don't uh, understand it completely okay and I can tell you right now a ton of uh, math students would have answered this matter of fact I should have put that as a multiple choice option 11,410 or if this was an open-ended question they would have put this down and not this because they didn't really really think about what the question is asking all right, so let's go ahead and get into it right now. So compound interest. Matter of fact, let me just talk very generally about compound interest. Now, I'm going to uh, not say this quote correctly, but compound interest is so important that even Albert Einstein, I think he called it uh, the most powerful force, one of the most powerful forces in the universe, right? So compound interest, tremendously important. So let's just talk about generally what is compound interest or compound growth. So really what we're talking about is something called exponential growth. And uh, this could be the case in investing or population growth. And here is kind of the basic concept, right? So most of you probably heard about compound interest. Hey, if you invest, you know, $10 every day into an account that grows, you know, 5%. Uh, compound interest over 30 years, you know, it'll be worth $10 million, you know, these crazy examples, but they're really not that crazy because they are true, assuming that these conditions stay true. But the idea is this, let's just take uh, money, for example. So here is our money that we have, and here is time. So an example of compound interest, and let's say our time is in years, it would be like, hey, we're investing money and our money's growing really, really slow, but then it kind of starts to pick up momentum over time and then it really starts to grow and it really starts to kind of take off and then it really takes off like crazy, okay? So this is an example of uh, compound interest, but really it's an example of something called exponential growth. And this is uh, a type of growth pattern that not only applies in the financial world, but again, in things that, you know, statistics, you know, we're talking about population growth, okay, the, you know, populations tend to sometimes grow, you know, in this manner. A lot of things in nature follow kind of an exponential growth function or a growth uh, pattern. Now, uh, compound interest, again, is what we call an exponential function because an, an exponential function, you know, just kind of, I don't want to get too technical. If we have a function, and let me just uh, put something here like two to the X power. If we have our variable in the exponent location of a function, this makes it an exponential function. And the formula for compound interest, we have for um, the variables in the exponent location, right? So compound interest um, is an exponential type of function. Okay, so hopefully I just want to kind of give you some big picture sense of compound interest for those of you that may not have known. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the formula for compound interest. Now there's different types of, there's different formulas for compound interest depending on the scenario. You can have continuous compound interest. You can have something being compounded annually, quarterly, you know, daily, hourly. It doesn't make a difference. So, you know, compound interest is not a fixed type of thing. So what does it mean to compound? Well, this is when we're basically applying our interest okay we're getting a return on our money so the formula that you want to use is this simple formula for compound interest and it goes like this a is the amount of money that you're going to make on this investment uh, and that's going to be equal to p well matter of fact let me just read the formula then i'll explain it so a is equal to p parentheses one plus r parentheses to the t power again we have this variable in the exponent spot so we have an exponential equation here or exponential function okay so now we get, let me go ahead and explain this so a is the amount total amount of money we're going to make on our investment but we need some money to invest right so in this case we have like seven thousand dollars this is called the principal amount so that's what the p is this is the amount of money that we have to invest now we have one plus r r is the interest rate Okay, in this particular uh, case, it's 5%. And we want to express that interest rate, this, uh, you know, basically the deal that the bank has given us, right? Hey, we'll give you 5% annual compound interest. That's the interest rates. We have to express that as a decimal. So that's what R is. And then T 
is time in years. So this is the formula that we want to use. Again, there are other formulas for compound interest, and there's something called continuous compound interest. So that's why I said, hey, look it up for yourself and see if you can, see if you can identify the correct formula for the problem. Okay, now here is uh, basically the formula. And if you didn't know the formula, and if you want to go back and you know try to figure out the problem, that's perfectly fine. But let's go ahead and get into uh, you know these variables and you know what it means in terms of our problem. Okay, so we have a principal amount. Okay, this is again our starting amount. We have our interest rate, and then we have our time in years. So let's take our problem and identify each of these uh, variables: P, R, and T. And of course, A is the amount that we're going to uh, earn on this investment. All right, so P is our principal amount. That is $7,000, right? Okay, R is 5%, 5% annual compound interest. Now, uh, annual, okay, this is really important, and I should stress this right now. We're talking about something called annual compound interest. So this variable, T, is all by itself. It represents... Uh, the number of years. Okay, so you can have one up there, that's one year, or two, that would be two years, or 2.5, that would be 2.5 years. Now, if you were doing another type of compounding, okay, annual, not and not annual compound interest, and you were compounding daily or quarterly, then you would have to use a, another formula. But I'm going to kind of keep it simple by just using this uh, compound interest formula. So hopefully that's not too confusing for some of you out there that really understand this stuff. Okay, so let's go back to our information. So T is what? Well, we're going to invest for 10 years, right? And A is the amount we're going to make on this investment. So we're going to take our $7,000, invest it for 5% uh, annual compound interest for 10 years. We're going to make a certain amount. That is, of course, A. All right, so all we have to do is plug this into the formula, this formula up here, and run the numbers, and then think about how to answer the question. So let's go ahead and take the next step, which, of course, is having you quickly subscribe to my YouTube channel. Now, don't you just love the way I kind of have to sneak that in? Well, I need your help, okay? Now, what I'm trying to do on YouTube is reach as many people as possible. And really, I think the main goal of my... Um, channel is obviously to teach mathematics, try to make math clear and understandable. But, you know, for me, deep down inside, my number one real passion is to really work on people's mindset, okay? Because math, you know, is one of these uh, subjects that a lot of people struggle with. A lot of people are unhappy about learning math. They either look like this or they're very angry. They're like, math, why do I need to know that stuff? I, I just want to pass my class. You know, you know, a lot of people have negative emotions when it comes to math. I totally get it, okay, because we all, you know, have our particular subjects that we like or dislike. But if you have these emotions right here, whether you're just like down on yourself or angry, you're gonna it's gonna be very difficult to learn math. But I'm telling you right now, you can be very successful in learning mathematics. But the first thing you need to do is try to get like a more positive mindset. Okay. In other words, you know, change your attitude. First of all, just I'm telling you right now, you can learn this stuff. So if you don't like it or you're not happy with it because you don't think you can learn it, well, you absolutely can. But like anything else, it's going to take time, effort, and most importantly, clear and understandable math instruction. That's where I can really help you out. So beyond these YouTube videos that I make, which are kind of nice little tutorials, you got to check out my full main math courses. That's where my best, most comprehensive math instruction is going to be. And what we're talking about here would be like algebra one level stuff. Uh, it's But compound interest, exponential function type of problems are not only taught in like algebra one, they're also taught in algebra two at a little bit more sophisticated level and pre-calculus. You'll find all the, uh, those courses in the description, the links to those courses. So depending on what level of math that you're in, you can check out these particular courses. And if you're not even going to school and you're like, hey, I just want to, you know, maybe relearn some math, then check out my math skills rebuilder course. Okay, so let's go ahead and get back to this prompt because all we have to do is plug in the respective numbers and we know what uh, the P is, that's our principal amount. We know what R is, that's our interest rate expressed as a decimal. And we know what T is. So let's go ahead and plug in the respective values. Here they are. And uh, But we have to be very careful here because some people will make a little um, uh, arithmetic mistake. I'll show you this in just one second. 
Okay, so our interest rate is what? Well, it's 5%, okay? What is 5% expressed as a decimal? All right, so let's just go back to basic percent. How do you change a percent to a decimal? Well, you divide by 100, okay? Now, the result of dividing by 100 is to move the decimal point two places to the left. So that's 0.05, okay? So we're talking about basic percent concept. All right, so our interest rate is 5% expressed as a decimal. That's 0.05. And we're going to be investing for 10 years, so that's our 10 up there. And our principal starting amount is 7,000. Okay, so here we go. And remember, we need to follow the order of operations here. Good old PEMDAS, right? For those of you that forgot about this, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. So where do we have to start first? Well, we have to start with parentheses. So we have to go ahead right in here and add 1 plus 0 0.05. Of course, that's just going to be 1.05. All right, so what's the next thing on our little PEMDAS checklist? It's E, exponents or powers. So are there powers? Indeed, there is. We have 1.05 to the 10th power. This is where you're going you're to need your calculator to do. But a lot of students, uh, you know, even really strong students, they just kind of tend to forget this stuff sometimes, the basic basic uh, order of operations, and they'll multiply 7,000 times 1.05, and then they'll uh, take that to the 10th power. I've seen that mistake Oh, I don't know, maybe like 100,000 times, maybe not that much, but you understand. I've pretty much seen it all as a math teacher. So anything that I emphasize to you, you should, you know, uh, hopefully give it some respect because I've been doing this for a long, long time. All right, so remember, we're going to have to uh, do powers, right, in our little PEMDAS here. So then lastly, we have multiplication, division, addition, subtraction. All right, so 1.05 to the 10th power, we're going to use our calculator and hopefully you know how to find a power in your calculator. So you're going to take that 1.05 in parentheses and use your caret uh, key or your x to the y or y to the x, some sort of function like this, and you know, uh, plug in 10. Matter of fact, you can just uh, make sure you uh, check uh, on your calculator that you're doing this right, because if you do 1.05 to the 10th power, you'll get one approximately 1.63. All right, so now we're down to uh, this last step, so 7,000 times 1.63 is going to be around about $11,410. So yay, we are very happy. We made some money on our money. We made $11,410. So are we done with the problem? Well, a lot of students would be, yes, here's my answer. I'm so excited because they got so focused on the solution, but they forgot to answer the question. The question is, how much money did you make? Okay, well, you started off with $7,000. And we grew that to 11,410. So we made the difference. We have to subtract these two. So the answer is going to be $4,410. Okay, so a pretty simple example of compound interest. These problems can get much more interesting. Um, and again, if you use a different formula, you know, no big deal. But uh, anyways, compound interest is something that you definitely want to be at least familiar with. And obviously, you can, you know, plug in all this information onto, uh, you know, into Google, you know, use, uh, you know, financial calculators to tell you, you know, the answers. But, you know, it's my personal belief that you're just going to be, you know, better, you know, at making decisions, understanding whatever you're trying to control or learn in your life if you really do understand the core concepts. Now, some of you are actually math students. You just need, this, need to understand this to pass your test. But either way, hopefully this video helped you out. And if that's the case, don't forget to like and subscribe. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.